Y'all know me. Know how I earn a living. This shark swallow you whole. I value my neck a lot more than 3,000 bucks, Chief. I'll find him for three, but I'll catch him and kill him for ten. Ten thousand dollars for me by myself. For that you get the head, the tail, the whole damn thing. You yell shark, we've got a panel on our hands on the 4th of July. Mr. Vaughn, Mr. Vaughn, I pulled a tooth the size of a shot glass out of the wreck hull of the boat out there, and it was the tooth of a great white. A what? You're gonna need a bigger boat. Love to prove that, wouldn't you? Get your name into the National Geographic. Now, I'm not saying that this is not the shark. It probably is, Martin. It probably is. It's a man-eater. It's extremely rare for these waters. But the fact is that the bite radius on this animal is different than the wounds on the victim. gentlemen of the Jaws Obsession. It is time. Episode 20 is here. campaign has launched. We have liftoff. This is our time. 50 years in the making. To the fans of the greatest movie ever made, you Jaws fans all over the world, this is a call to arms, a call to action. This broadcast is delivering you the message that when we stand together, we can do great things. And 50 years from now, they will be talking about what we did together at this time how the fans of Jaws came together and told Universal Studios there is more to the story of Jaws and we want to see it. To all of you listening to this message, you are now part of Jaws history. The rest of the story is ready to be told. summer of 2025, the movie Jaws will turn 50 years old, and on that half a century anniversary, 
we here at the Jaws Obsession, and I'm and that is a collective we, including all of you out there listening right now. We request that Universal Studios, in order of celebration for the 50th anniversary of Jaws, to release in the summer of 2025 the prequel to Jaws that Steven Spielberg always had in mind for a second Jaws film, a prequel detailing the backstory of Quint. We want this prequel to Jaws in the summer of 2025. And we want Ian Shaw to play a younger Quint, carrying on the legacy of his father, Robert Shaw. And in doing so, he will be introducing the full story of Quint to a new generation of Jaws fans. And we at the Jaws Obsession are here to show you the blueprint on how to get it done. Ladies and gentlemen, I introduce to you The Book of Quint, a 300-plus page novel detailing the events that make Quint into the fearless shark hunter of Amity Island. From 1945 to 1968, we will witness how Quint rises to become a legend of the North Atlantic. The movie industry has changed a lot since 1975, but history always has a way of repeating itself. And here we are 50 years, almost 50 years later, and it all still starts with a book. That's what I like to term the Peter Benchley timeline. What we are on right now is the Peter Benchley timeline. That is, 50 years ago, Peter Benchley already received his advance from Doubleday Publishing. And what Peter Benchley was doing was he was writing the manuscript for the novel Jaws in 1972. By January of 1973, Peter Benchley would turn the manuscript of Jaws into his publisher, and the rest was history. And here we are, 50 years later, and the same will happen again. We're going to make this happen. For the last 23 months, I have been working on the Book of Quint. There was an extensive research phase, which transitioned into a writing phase. Many wheels were set in motion. So six months ago, this weekly broadcast was started in order to show you, the listeners, and the Jaws universe, that Jaws is a greater film when you understand the details hidden within. Some of these details we've discussed in past episodes of The Jaws Obsession, and they were based on my research and writing for the Book of Quint. I started The Jaws Obsession uh, to earn your trust and to get through the first 20 episodes over half a year. The main objective was for you, the fans of Jaws, to allow me to show you the rest of the story. But more importantly, for you Jaws fans all over the world, This is a chance for everyone to rise up together and bring this story to the silver screen. If we make enough noise, Universal will listen. And three years from now, we will all be in theaters watching Ian Shaw in an M51 field jacket standing at the pulpit of the Orca in the Book of Quint. It will happen if we all stand together. This is a preemptive strike by a fan base never seen before in the history of cinema, whereas other fan bases of other film franchises were reactive. They wait to see what Hollywood does, and then they react to the results. Well, Jaws fans, we are, we're, we're a resourceful people. We are a resourceful working class people, and we are proactive to where we can jump into action to influence Hollywood and Universal. This is a completely new strategy that really has never been attempted before, and we're going to attempt that now, starting here on episode 20 of The Jaws Obsession. And to do all this, we got to make some noise. That noise is The Book of Quint. So let's run down a little summary. The Book of Quint is a novel. It's following the format of the original Jaws novel in that it's written in three parts. Part one details Quint's final day in the water with the rest of the USS Indianapolis survivors on Thursday, August 2nd, 1945. How Quint survives the onslaught of sharks and makes it out of the water is shown in great detail, as well as the dramatic PBY rescue and the aftermath of it all. We also see how Quint's life takes an even worse turn in 1951 San Francisco after the start of the Korean War. When we get into part two of the novel, we see the actual deal that brings Quint to Amity Island in 1951 for the sole purpose of hunting sharks. The discovery of the vessel and rebuild process of what will be the iconic orca. The details surrounding the barrel hunting technique are discovered and perfected over the next 15 years while Quint watches Amity start to become a haven for tourists. Some key characters from the movie Jaws emerge in great detail in part two. And then, of course, we go into part three 
and part three is the historic battle of 1968 with the massive 16-foot great white shark off Montauk, New York, as Quint's hunting technique and the orca itself are pushed to the very limit. The Book of Quint combines many, many details from the movie Jaws. Many questions are answered and we, we learn many details. What also do we learn in the Book of Quint? We learn that there were always large sharks of all species off of Amity, and there is a reason why. We learn the evolution of the barrel hunting technique, but more importantly, we learn Quint's earliest inspiration for it. We learn the origin of the Fair Spanish Ladies verse that Quint sings in Jaws and why he only sings it when thinking about death by shark. What else do we learn? We're going to learn about Quint's fateful injury that causes his fall into the shark in Jaws. We've talked about this in episode 18. We revealed that injury, but now we're actually going to see why it happens and how it happens. But that's not all. We see all the injuries Quint talks about in Jaws at the table with Hooper. We see the missing tooth. We see the bump on the head, the thresher's tail. We're also going to be introduced to the true nemesis to Quint, the oceanic white tip shark. This is the main species of shark that, the, that hunted the USS Indianapolis survivors in the water back in 1945. And we're going to learn why most of the jaws on Quint's walls are oceanic white tip sharks. Oceanic white tip sharks are the velociraptor of the shark world. They're smart, strategic, adaptive, agile, and extremely deadly. We're finally going to find out just who Nako Nolan is. And, and we even get to see, as Quint recalls, we get to see how he even saw a shark eat a rocking chair once. Also included in the book of Quint is the map of Amity Island. That's right. This has never been done before. What is the Hobbit without the map of Middle Earth? So the story of Quint can only be told utilizing a map of Amity Island, which was lacking from the original Jaws book and the movie. With each book of Quint, printed inside will be two maps of Amity Island, a 1951 map and a 1974 map, detailing the lighthouses and locations of Jaws and Jaws 2, and you will be able to reference how those locations relate to the events in the book of Quint. And of course, there's a chance for a 77-year-old Matt Hooper to make an appearance and add weight and detail to the story. All of these and more are in the book of Quint. So where do we go from here? Episode 20, May 7th, 2022. How do we go from here? How do we become, how do we make this a reality? We all come together and we publish the book of Quint. At the time of your listening to this broadcast, over at Indiegogo.com, a campaign for the book of Quint has been launched. It is now live. With your support, each of you will receive the Book of Quint novel when we hit publication in October of 2022. This is the heart of our movement. If enough of us stand together and make some noise and we move the needle, Universal will listen. The Indiegogo campaign page and Book of Quint page over at JawsOB.com, which now can also be found at BookOfQuint.com, are designed to give you a full introduction to the Book of Quint and to what we are doing here. We have a concept trailer video that is not to be missed. It's hosted on YouTube. It's available. You can actually see it on the Indiegogo page. Not to be missed. There is also a link to read the entire first chapter to the Book of Quint. Right there on the Indiegogo page as also on our website at the Book of Quint page, which is now at JawsOB.com. And of course, all these links will be found in our show notes for episode 20 over at Telegram at Jaws OB at our Telegram channel, which can be found at the contacts page from JawsOB.com. So remember, we are on the Peter Benchley timeline. We are in that timeline right now. 50 years ago, right now, Peter Benchley is writing the manuscript. I am on schedule for a completed manuscript by July. Editing and proofs will be done this summer, uh, later this summer, and then we're right to the printer for publication in October of 2022. Peter Benchley did not get the manuscript for Jaws done until January of 1973. So we are still ahead of the Peter Benchley timeline. If we stay ahead of this Peter Benchley timeline, there will be enough time left over for the studio to get to work and make a decision and then make the movie by July of 2025. 
this will happen if we all come together and make it happen. But in a way, it's already happened. Because when you read this book, not the book of Quint uses the movie Jaws as canon, and it follows intricate details and clues left in the movie, along with side characters and faces in the background to create an entire backstory to Quint. What also is very profound is not only will this story stand alone and create a gripping and dramatic tale of Quint, okay, but also after reading it, your viewing of the movie Jaws will never be the same. You will notice performances of minor characters and objects in the background that now take on a whole new meaning, all right? This is essentially what a prequel should do. Prequel should make the original more enjoyable, okay? And that's what we have here is we have an addendum to the original 1975 Jaws. So when you read this, your enjoyment of Jaws just shoots through the roof. And that we are now going to make a reality. We are in the driver's seat. We don't have to wait for Universal at this point. We are in the driver's seat here. This book is a reality and it will be published in October. And I want to get this into as many hands of Jaws fans around the world And that's why using today's technology, it's very amazing. We can do all of this ourselves. We don't have to wait for anybody. On Indiegogo, we are going, it's it's happening. The campaign is launched and it's going to be reality. There's time to talk about the campaign. We're going to talk about that in later episodes. The Jaws Obsession is now going to uh, morph into a weekly update on the book of Quint until we are done. That's just how it's going to happen. And what happens now is we have a host of, we have an entire mountain of new information and new material to go over to actually enhance our enjoyment of Jaws. And that's what new Jaws material does. We have been lacking new Jaws material that's canon to the movie we have been lacking that seriously for for many many years and this right here is going to give us many new avenues of uh of conversation and many much more material to go over so i'm very excited about the future and what we're going to do from here on out so everyone has a lot of material to soak up and get excited about here uh the book of quint is here okay it's real It's the rest of the story, which we have all known was there. We all kind of knew there was more there, but we just couldn't verbalize it. We felt it, right? You felt it. That's why we love Jaws. There's so much happening there, but we can't, we don't really know. There's more to the story and we are just now bringing it into reality ourselves. That's pretty amazing. And with the today's technology that I am able to reach out to you as well as we're going to be able to publish this ourselves. I did not want to take this and and make it into a script and do the secret squirrel routine. I did not want that. I wanted to take it to the Jaws fans first because the Jaws fans have been denied this type of enjoyment for many, many years. And that's why it was very important for me to actually take this to you, the fans, first and give you the opportunity to actually read the story and how it was done originally when Peter Benchley wrote Jaws. The fans, the people listened to the story, learned the characters, and then the movie was made afterwards. And the movie was obviously very different from the book. But the simple fact is, is that's the progression that we will follow here. We are going to follow that same progression and we will have a repeat of history. In my, in my estimation and in my belief that if we follow these steps, publication, book, enjoy the book, it will become the movie. And that's what we're going to do here. Very exciting. So a few more words here to close out this episode 20 and let everyone go dive right into the campaign for the Book of Quint. I wanted to make a few addresses, if I could, please. To Mr. Ian Shaw. Your father brought the character of Quint into our lives. Some of us saw an uncle, a friend, a relative, a brother, even a father or a grandfather in Robert Shaw's portrayal of Quint. I am writing this book with you and only you in my mind playing a younger Quint. I hope you don't mind as I ask Jaws fans all over the world to cast you in the role when they read the book of Quint and watch the movie in their minds. 
Your recent success portraying your father playing Quint in the award-winning stage play, The Shark is Broken, was the final answer from the universe that all of this was meant to be. The Book of Quint is a celebration of your father's performance, while at the same time a vehicle to ensure that that performance is not forgotten. It's not forgotten, but introduced to a whole new generation of fans. I will be in touch with you shortly to have you as part of this project, to have you as part of this journey, this story. Playing Quint in our mind's eye as we read this book just brings even more validity to the fact that history truly does repeat itself and that the story arcs of life actually do come around full circle. To Mr. Richard Dreyfus. I created the concept trailer to The Book of Quint, which is now live over at our YouTube page. And I virtually cast your voice for the narration of your iconic character, Matt Hooper. In the trailer, an aged Hooper is recalling Quint 50 years later after the events of Jaws. When I was in the fifth grade, I was told I needed glasses. And I was bummed. Back then, all the kids with glasses got made fun of because the styles were non-existent. When my mom took me to the dreaded glasses store, and I stood in front of the wall of frames. My one and only directive to the salesman was, I wanted the ones that Richard Dreyfuss wore in Jaws. That man reached up, after looking around, reached up, and he took the closest ones they had that matched your frames from the movie. He placed them on me, and he stood back, and he turned to my mom, and he said, The kids got style. At that moment, Matt Hooper made me cool. The Book of Quint is a chance for you to reprise your, in my opinion, your greatest role. To bookend your career with the character that started it all. To see you once again as Matt Hooper with the iconic glasses would be, for lack of a better term, pretty darn cool. I hope you enjoy the trailer, and if possible, maybe share it with your pal Stephen S. To Mr. Steven Spielberg, what better way to bookend an iconic career by revisiting the two iconic characters which played such a major role at your beginning, Quint and the Orca. Your instincts in a Jaws prequel back in the 70s were correct, and I believe that this was the story that was meant to be told. The men who lost their lives during the sinking of the USS Indianapolis and the tragedy that followed must not be forgotten. To be visually placed in the water with Quint on Thursday, August 2nd, 1945, waiting for the PBY Catalina to land in the water, would sear into the memories of all of us just what these men went through. It would also ensure that they would never be forgotten. I can think of no other director in history that could pull it off better than you. The fans of Jaws have children and grandchildren that can be introduced to Quint and watch him construct the orca from the derelict vessel he finds it as. To see them both once again hit the high seas would be a beginning bookend to the Jaws saga and a glorious way to sail into the sunset. To Universal Studios, with the 50th anniversary of the greatest film in your catalog fast approaching, The Book of Quint is an honorable way to remember Jaws. The Jaws fan base doesn't need a tacky Jaws 5 gimmick or yet another Blu-ray digipack release with extra sounds and a new cover. And the world certainly doesn't need another remake. We here at the Jaws Obsession feel Jaws doesn't need to be exploited. There's been enough of that over the years. After half a century, it is time the movie should be celebrated. The Book of Quint would do just that. And if you should rebuild the Orca, or two, for the production of the Book of Quint, make them into floating museums where we could take our children for a visit, or maybe even sail around the harbor in the years to come. Wouldn't that be a celebration for the ages? And finally, to the fans of Jaws all around the world, let's make some noise. Let's make our voices heard. Like, share, and subscribe to this episode of the broadcast, the Book of Quint trailer on YouTube. Like the video, share the video everywhere. Send out the link to the video on your social media. Text the link to your relatives. It's time to charge up that hill. The Book of Quint is worth it. Trust me, trust me, it's worth it. And 50 years from now, you'll think about this moment during the 100th anniversary of Jaws, how a group of fans came together and helped bring the Book of Quint into reality and at the same time complete the saga of the greatest movie of all time, Jaws. Show me the way to go I'm tired, I want to go to bed I had a little think about it all There 
it is, folks. Episode 20. We knew that there was something important happening here. I wasn't going to disappoint you. Was it worth the wait? Let me know. JawsOB.com. Write us here at JawsOB2025 at gmail.com. Let us know what you think about the book of Quint. Get in on the campaign. Get in line. And after October, you're going to be reading the novel to the book of Quint. The movie Jaws is copyrighted property of Universal Studios. Any reference and sampling from the movie Jaws in this episode is intended to fall within Section 107 of the Copyright Act. The copyrighted materials are fairly used for the purposes of criticism, comment, reporting, teaching, and research. The materials used here are protected by the fair use guidelines of Section 107 of the Copyright Act, all rights reserved to the copyright owners. And once again, go to JawsOB.com. Follow the links. You can go right to the campaign page. You can watch the video. Read the first chapter to the Book of Quint. We'd love to know what you think. I'd love to read some comments on the air. JawsOB2025 at gmail.com. Or you can reach us at our Telegram channel at JawsOB, Discord servers. All those can be found on the contact page. Follow the link in the description of this podcast, broadcast, whatever you're listening on. And you can go right to all the links and find the Book of Quint. It's a whole new world. See you in episode 21.